Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're a wee bit early this morning, it's half nine, but listen, uh, it's good to see everyone. Just see this morning, I want to give a couple of verses that are really important in my heart. And I feel they're for us for the new year. Right? And I know, in honesty, this is what I, personally, in my own life, I don't want to deceive anyone. I don't want to believe we, the church, are living under a mask, and deceiving people with other, uh, other agendas going on, and we're not willing to just stand and walk in the truth. <clears throat> See, I'm going to pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, this morning for the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Father, for all the blessings he has brought into our lives. We just pray Jesus could say the Spirit of the Lord upon him. I just want to pray the Spirit of the Lord upon me. It's not to me to preach, and we thank you for it. Uh, it's good to see everyone. See, this morning, I want to... First, I already give some of them online this morning, if I can find this verse. Psalm, Psalm 50, verse 23 in the Passion. Psalm 50, verse 23. The life that pleases me is a life lived in the gratitude of grace. Always choosing to walk with me in what is right. It's time we, the church, decided to choose to walk with God, with him and all what's right. This is the sacred price I desire for you. For if you do this, more of my salvation will be unfolded to you. There's another one found in Colossians chapter Three. Father, we the church repent because we have not walked fully and followed you in your divine way and path. Father, we have, we have chosen to follow maybe traditional teaching and never really looked into your word or asked you by revelation to see if this is the path you'd have us to take. Father, we just repent of this and we ask you, Lord, to renew our minds to the path you want us to take. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 to 25. Okay, I'm going to read, I'm going to read verse 22. Let every employee listen well and follow the instructions of their employer, not just when employers are watching, not in pretense, but in faithful in all things. For we are to live our lives with pure hearts, in the constant awe and wonder of our Lord God. Put your heart and soul into every activity you do, and as, you are, as you are doing it for the Lord himself, not merely for others. For you know that we will receive a reward and inheritance from the Lord as we serve the Lord Yahweh. And I don't want. A disciple will be repaid for what he has learned and followed. For God pays no attention to the titles or prestige of men. If you get a chance, read them and read them and read them. Listen to this wee bit. As a disciple will be repaid for what he has learned and followed. The two things go in together learn and follow. The Lord us want to hear the message, but in our hearts, we never follow. Most of that verse in Psalm 50 says there, there's our, there's our God will unveil divine revelation of his salvation. The salvation's in the, I'm not talking this morning about salvation. Salvation means you come to Christ, but then there's a salvation of your soul, and then a salvation for a prize, for wealth and the prize, and an end result for your life left for the Lord. And he reveals the one who learns and follows. You know, and listen to this here, I'm going to talk this morning about the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to talk about this morning about the Lord Jesus. Okay. No, we the church have never really, or can I ask you a question, do we really want to walk in the revelation that God has for us? Are we happy enough inside our wee bubble? We want to hear, but we don't want to follow. We want to learn things, but we don't want to follow. That's the number of I said before. Now, if you read, now I was reading this the other night there. I'll, I'll read it in the AV, Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2. 
was telling about the Lord Jesus. I have to watch the times, but I said we'll go with it. Right. I'll read verse 1. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. Oh, another king. Oh, dear. Join the king. Herod says. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. The Messiah, some version shall say. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the brother. And this, these verses are going to be read all over the world from now to New Year's. Right? And by Bethlehem in the land of Judea, and not the least among the prince of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor. I shall rule my people Israel. For out of thee shall come a governor who will rule my people Israel. Remember, I told you the other night in Genesis 49 the scepter shall not depart from Judah. The scepter is one who has got sovereign divine authority. And here he is, the child that's about to be born. Who will be the governor to rule the people of Israel? And listen, Israel rejected him. But that's what we did. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them, didn't they what time the star appeared? So he sent them to Bethlehem. So we listen to the things out of Bethlehem, the Messiah of Christ will be born. So Herod sent them to Bethlehem. Well, you need to go down. And then went, right, verse 10. And when they saw the star, Rejoice with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary the mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they opened their treasure, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So these wise men knew, knew they'd come to worship the king, the governor, and the scepter, the one with the divine. Remember when Prince Charles, a couple of weeks ago, on it? And the UK took the scepter. The king has come, the scepter. The, king, the wise men bow down and worship the one who God had given all of us. See, we today just see him as a child, mostly. And they see my. But you, could I read this wee verse here? Go you to Luke chapter 2. So Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. <clears throat> Let me stay a little bit long on this verse. Look okay. At verse 1, and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this tax was first made when Serena was the governor of Syria, and all that were and all that went and all that went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up to Galilee out of the city of Naples, and into Judea of the city of David. Which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lines of David. He taxed with Mary, his expired wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth, she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger because there was no room for him in the end. See if you walk with a divine truth today. You will be an outside Christian. When Jesus, if you notice there, Jesus was Jesus killed in the middle of Jerusalem? Or was he crucified in the middle of Jerusalem? He was outside. And if you're walking the right message today, could I tell you you will be outside? Oh, nearly everything else. You know, I say a wee verse in Hebrews 13. Uh, unto him, Outside the camp. If you're going to walk with the Lord Jesus Christ, you're outside the camp of religion. No, that's all that stuff. So that's what I read about. And she brought forth her son, and there was the same, oh, wait, right, made him in the main because there was no room for him. And, then, and there was in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, 
keep them watch over the flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came unto them, and the glory of the Lord shone about them. And they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. See if you look in the Passion. A Savior, the Messiah, who is the Lord Yahweh. Right? right. No need to put, right? For unto you is born this day, read, and this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. manger. And suddenly, there was it was with the angel and what the children of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill toward all men. And it came to pass as the angels were going away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. Okay. These shepherds, the Lord had made known the birth of the king. The scepter, the one with all authority, who would rule and govern all the Israel and the Jews. I'm going to tell you this. We'll read on to anybody see if I find this. Right? right. And they came with haste, verse 16, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told unto them concerning this time. They found the child and what did they do? They went out to everybody about and they said everything concerning this child. What the angel revealed unto them. Right? And all they that heard it wondered at those things which are told them by the shepherds. <coughs> by Mary, but Mary kept all these things in their hand. What did you hear what happened yesterday? Her and my wife was away working early on in the morning, and I had to drop her down. I came in and I was doing a couple of things for Karen and other things in the house. All of a sudden, I switched the TV on. And I was coming up to the King of Kings, the end of the, the thing about the Lord, the King of Kings, and I pressed it on. And watched a wee bit. All of a sudden, now the door. So I goes to the door. And I says, these two people are standing at the door, man and woman. He says, are you, is this the house where the woman had just had, had a, a pup and she wants to inquire more about God? And I says, uh, no, I don't think it might be next door. And then he says to me, would you like to inquire more about God? And I says, um, I know God. And, I says, and then he says to me, uh, I says, what are you going to inquire and talk about? He says, we're, 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 we're coming around the houses to tell people and give them hope. And he says, uh, I knew where they were coming from and who they were. And I says, is the message you're giving, giving people hope? So I went after everything. I know your beliefs, and I know my own beliefs. So I believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is co-equal, and he's co-eternal with God. The next thing I says, you know, I swear, the Lord Jesus Christ is the Messiah. The one who foretold will come, the Messiah that will come. I'm going to tell you, I see the child that's born in the manger, which everybody's going about and telling about you around Christmas. There's a wee thing in Isaiah that says this, They shall call, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. They shall call his name Wonderful, Counselor, Prince of Peace. And the only one that can bring peace into any of our lives is the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, well, yes, and I says, this one will come, will rule, and God has given them delegated authority over everything. And they, they turn and says, yes, he will rule, and come and day. I says, no, but you don't believe he's God. 
Now, I was nice to them. Were you this? My sister told me this. You're asking to give people hope. So the only thing you can give people hope is, and I'm going to read this first I read it, the passion. Let's see, Luke chapter 2, is the passion. See, all I'm just saying is this, this man come and that's what he said to me. If you want to tell people, I'm going to talk to people about God. He said, I know God. That's just what I'm talking about. Luke chapter 2. Right? <clears throat> Verse 10. But the angel reassured them, saying, Don't be afraid, for I have come to bring you good news. The most joyous, joyous news the world has ever heard. And it is this for every and it is for everyone everywhere. For today in Bethlehem a rescuer was born for you. He is the Lord Yahweh the Messiah. As I told them. Read this. You will recognize him by the miracle sign. You will find a babe wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Then all at once a vast number of glorious angels appeared, the very armies of God, and they all praised God, saying, Glory to God in the highest. Realms of heaven, for there is peace and a good hope given to the sons of men. So we know I said this man said the only hope that we can give people is the Lord Jesus Christ. So you're, Andrew, I didn't, wasn't asked to them. We're, we're going to talk to people and give them hope. Listen to us here. Can I tell you this? You can't give people hope. The scriptures is the only thing you can give people which will give you hope. And especially if you, you emphasize the Lord Jesus Christ. We are, I said to these people, I said, you must hear, everyone is in this word. If we die without Christ, we die without hope. And you die without God. Can I ask you a question? I said to them, have you Christ? Now he turned and says to me, where do you got verse at? I show you the verse. Ephesians chapter 2. See, it's time we wakened up and realized what are we telling people? For if we don't walk in the truth, how is the truth ever going to get out here? Because you know why there's so much deception out there. Ephesians chapter 2. And I was not nasty and I was really nice and just uh, it really burdens my heart to see what's out there and what's not Christ. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 12 but at that time you were without Christ if I asked everyone listen this message are you without Christ? Oh but I I, oh, but I profess or I get saved now on this I said I'm, I'm not I'm asking you have you Christ? If you're without Christ this verse says you're without hope I live a good life and I go to church. Listen, I'm not asking that. I'm asking you very simple, but have you, Christ? Have you ever called upon the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, I put my hand up or I answered this and I asked Jesus, no, listen, I'm asking, here's, have you, Christ? For if you die without Christ, you die without God. Listen this verse here. And at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the Commonwealth, those are strangers of the covenant of promise, having no hope. And without God in the world. There's people today that are without God and are without hope unless they get Christ. And I'm not I'm not telling and I'm not motivating people. I'm just telling you, you and I can live this life and motivate all. I'm asking you a question. Some of these days you and I will pass. And as I said, in some of these days we'll pass. So tell me this. Where will you go? And this, these, these two just sat and listened to me. And that's not here. Can I say this again? If you do die without Christ, you die without him. The word needs Christ. The word needs the true gospel. Present it to them. Listen, we're born in Adam. We die in Adam. We die in our sins. John 8, verse 21 and 24. See what Jesus says? Or else you can die in Christ. 
day in the Lord. Revelation 14, verse 30. Everyone will die. Later day and Adam will die in Christ. And that's the babe that's born here. This, this is the babe of the child. I want to talk about this morning. You know, them people turn around and say to the very last, he says to me, let's say he asked this young fellow, what's your name? Say, years ago, he was used to visit me. And I'd say it's 20 years since you came to my door. Okay. Three years, never come to my door. No request. He says, who are you? He says, I think I've seen you and I know you. So I know you. So I tell me this. He says, my name's Holy Spot. And she says, I've heard you before. And she says, you probably heard me from your mother. And your father. And all I'm just saying to you is, it's time we started presenting Christ with no add-ons. People need Christ. You see this verse I'm going to read here. Once this was verse here, I read it already. Glory to God in the highest, Luke 2, 14. Glory to God in the highest, Realms of heaven, for there is peace and a good hope given to the sons of men. There is peace and a good hope given to the sons of men. You must hear the gospel brings hope as the only hope people have. And they need to be presented Christ. And that's what this version is saying here. Do I read this again? But the angel reassured them, saying, verse 10, Don't be afraid, for I have come to bring you good news, the most joyful news the world has ever heard, and it is for everyone and everywhere. For today in Bethlehem a rescuer is born for you. He is the Lord Yahweh, the Messiah. The word needed the Messiah, the Messiah has come. And all over the world, they're celebrating the child, but they don't understand that he's the Messiah, the Lord God. You know, us here, and people never, that's all they said, and they left, and they thanked me, and I was thanked them, and I went, and he said this to me, well, agree to disagree. And I turned around, and then he said, I said, no, well, no dear, I will not agree to disagree. I will not come under agreement with you. It's time we start coming into agreement with people. It's time we just stood up to them shepherds. We hear what happened to us, the angel of the Lord command us, and the child of the Lord Jesus Christ in the Son is born. It's time we stopped agreeing with other things that are not what God's from. And that's what we're doing. And we don't understand it. But what harm at it? Well, you just come into agreement with it. We see this now. Why do you leave me back for you? Go to you to Isaiah, and I read this all into Isaiah 9, verse 6. Isaiah 9, verse 6. For unto us a child, this child we're talking about, born in the manger. Born. For unto us a son is given. God gave the son. And this is the child, the son of God, born in the manger. Right? Excuse me. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, the son. The government of God will be upon the son of God when the child is born. We hear, I never said this, say you believe in the Lord Jehovah. So I believe in Jehovah, that you believe, but I believe that God has God's Son. And they're co equal and they're co eternal. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised, that's not what I'm going to say here, that them two people are saved. Because <coughs> they never talked to me, no, they said, they listened, and they listened with open ears. An open mind's in that. This. What is this? For unto you is a child is born, and unto us a son is given. It's time we started preaching, child who is the son of God. 
read this. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. On his name, his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The only peace that you and I can have is the peace that the Lord Jesus Christ can have. For every mass is a false peace. And the only hope the world has is the hope of the child, the son. And that's what the angels said there in Luke 2. Read again, Luke 2, verse 14. Glory to God in the highest, the angel says, for there is peace and a good hope given to the sons of men. It's time we started presenting people the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, the child born in the nature. Listen, I'm going to say, I'm not going to say very, very much more here than this. You must hear, no, really, can you hear this years and years ago? Years and years ago, one day I was reading, and I was reading John Fundy. And it really gripped me. You see this. Jesus was put in the tomb. You see, what's this to do with Christmas? We see this, we see this way impact in my life. On the first day of the week, come with Mary Magdalene early. And when it was dark, on the sepulchre. And seeing the stone taken away from the sepulchre, as they be, then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciples, whom Jesus loved and said unto him, They have taken away the Lord. Out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they've laid him. Peter therefore went forth and other disciples and came to sepulchre. So they ran both together, the other disciple, they ran out on Peter and came first to sepulchre. And he stood and down looked and saw, in and saw the linen clothes lying, yet he went, he went no in. Then come on Simon Peter falling and in the sepulchre, seeing the linen clothes lie, and the napkin that was about his head not lying with the linen cloth but wrapped together. And place by itself. Then and also the other disciples which came first to this to sepulchre and saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scriptures, but he must rise it from the dead. So this is this is the birth. I was talking about the birth before. This is the death of the Lord. Now the thing I read that morning, we hear this. Then the disciples went away again onto the Roman. But more, Mary stood without the sepulchre weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre, and seeing two angels in white sitting, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had laid. His body's not there. And they went unto her woman. Why did you start? She said unto them, Because they have taken away the my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when, <clears throat> when she had thus said, she turned her shell back and saw Jesus standing and knew not it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom sickest thou? She supposing him to the gardener said, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me. She then go back down you. Tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said, Mary, she turned herself and said unto him, Rabona, what is to say, Master? Jesus said, her, touch me not. For I am not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend to my Father and your Father. To my God and your God. I'm going to ascend to my Father. But see, when I ascend, I'm going to... Let's not read it again. I ascend unto my Father and your Father. And rise unto my God and your God. When I believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, God became my Father and God became my God. And I have the same relationship that the Lord Jesus Christ has. And that really kept me years ago. And see, that was on the film yesterday, you better that there. We yes, and then all of a sudden, knock at the door. <clears throat> Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, 
So that's the relationship you and I got when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah of Lord Yahweh. We, I come into a relationship that God is now my Father. And we're telling you, yes, Lord is now my God. And the Lord Jesus Christ is now in a relationship to me. To me. And I am joined the heirs and co-heirs with Christ. See, a lot of people believe that only when you mature that you become that child and you come into that relationship. And I come into that relationship and I received the gospel, the good news of peace and hope. Which is we about here. Then the same day, the evening be the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, the tables were assembled for fear of the Jews came. Jesus and stood in the midst and said, the very first words he said to every one of his disciples, please. See, the Lord Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace on the only hope, the Word. And that's what happened at the birth. And here's his resurrection. Now, here's the key. How many of us know that God is your Father? And God is your God. And the Lord Jesus Christ, you and I are co-heirs and joint heirs with him. And that's the relationship you and I have got. And see, 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 because it took a wee bit farther. Let me tell you this. Sid and Friday night, I think, I just want to show you a wee thing here just to see. See when I'm here. See all the programs the, work, the church has today. The body of Christ is to be divided up into all different things and different, different denominations, different things. Jesus comes along here in John 21. And he meets Simon Peter. And he says this in uh, verse 15. So when Jesus was walking along the sea, and all of a sudden the disciples, Peter had given up because they crucified the Lord, and he believed that he was the Messiah, and he was going to restore Israel. And the whole thing, his plans had fell apart. So he went away, and he took up another disciples with him. And he, walked, and he went back to fishing. And Jesus was walking the sea for him. And he was up here and he meets Peter, Simon Peter. Then he says in verse 5, So when they dined, Jesus said unto him, Simon, son of Jomer, lovest me more than these. He said unto him, Yes, Lord. Now Peter had rejected the Lord three times. And he comes along here and he says this, Can I ask you this morning, how would you answer these questions to the Lord? He said unto him, Yes, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my hand. That's, that's what our heart should be. Our heart should be to, to feed God's people, not to build these programs, not to bring division. I remember one night going to a meeting and Stephen Carter, this young man sat down and said, I started telling him, he says, what's wrong with the church is there's a Jezebel spirit in the church and it's wrecking the church. And they quote these verses. They give me all these slips of paper. You give that and tell that to everybody. Next thing he turned around, I said, where do you go? I, I go to a Presbyterian church. I says, so what are you going there for? She don't believe in it. I know, but we're in there to help them. I'm going to ring the vision. Please. Don't show me that I told you in Body of Christ, we're dividing it. And we don't realize it. We're bringing division. The Lord Jesus came to bring unity. No division. We hear this. I says, Why are you doing that? I says, Been in there and told. I says, I've been no many church to bed here. He says, I feel called to go in. I must go in and tell them and help them. I said, What will you do whenever you help them? Well, well I tell them to come out of that. Go and join things I don't want next. That's what we're doing this 20, 30 years. We're going to churches and we're bringing them out and we're taking the big churches and we're dividing the body of Christ. God wants the body of Christ with unity. What, what does the Lord say to Peter? Peter, feed my lambs, Peter. Feed them. The lambs need fed. 
Yes. He said it again the second time, Peter, son of John, the love of time. He says, yes, Lord, thou knowest I love thee. Do you love the Lord? Are you feeding the lambs or are you dividing the lambs? Are you feeding the sheep or are you dividing the sheep? Please. He said, yes, Lord, thou knowest. He said, feed my sheep. And he said unto him the third time, son of John, love us thou me. And Peter screamed because and that, I'm not going to get into the doctrinal stuff. Them were different words for loves, different. Different name in Greek for them loves. Let me tell you this. Simon Peter said, Love us thou me. Peter was free because he said unto him the third, thou lo Love us thou me. And he said, Yes, Lord, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest I love thee. Feed my sheep. Read this. Fairly I say unto you, When thou was young, thou girdest thyself and walks were in thy woods. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee where thou goest. And the Lord is speaking forth of Peter and his death, the time of age. This bit he signifying by what death he should glorify God. He would be crucified, and he would be crucified for the Lord. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, That's what he said before, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. What's our job? Feed the lambs, feed the sheep. Follow me. Who are we to follow? The oh, Lord Jesus. What's this we got? Then Peter says, What about this boy? If I will try to go, what is that to you? You follow me. Years ago, the Lord told me. Very plainly, why I want you to follow me. And listen, I, I, I started to follow the Lord. And I started to bring up, and the Lord started to show me things. I never went into the body of Christ anywhere and brought the vision. I came out and I followed the Lord. I never went anywhere and brought the vision. It's time we, the body of Christ, if you have a different agenda and program, just you leave the sheep and the lambs where they're at, and you come out. I've never told a wife to leave her husband or go and follow another teacher. I told the wife to go back to her husband and come under the authority of her husband. I never brought division to a man or wife. I never brought division to a home. I never brought division to a church. When the Lord told to do, I just come to the side and I started to follow the Lord. And the way it was, the Lord has brought the people that want to listen to the message. But I never brought the vision. And I pray for the people who are going to bring the vision. But they don't know what they're doing. Here's two prayers I want each one used to pray. Listen to us here. Father, forgive them. They don't know what to do. I've just got really a grasp of this prayer last while. When people come and do things and say things, I just try to say this, Father, forgive them. They don't know what to do. Will you listen? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable, O Lord, in my strength, in my strength and my redeemer. Lord, pray that my words that I speak and the thoughts of my heart will be aligned with your thoughts. And Father, and every time somebody says or does anything on me, Father, Try and remember me and recollect me. And Father, forgive them. They don't know what to do. And all I'm just saying to you is, see this here. That's what the Lord, the very first thing he said to the disciples. Peace be on you. Now, Peter had an agenda and he thought the Lord was going to be the Messiah, which he was. And he was going to restore Israel, all the things back to Israel. And Peter left the ministry. And went to the fishing and he meets the Lord. And the Lord comes along and says, May this be our eye openers this morning to each one of us. Feed the lambs and feed the sheep and stop the vine. Okay, what do you do? I, I want to show you the one that told me to follow him, who he was, who he is. If you go to a 20 man, so I'm finishing here 25 past, a 15 man, sorry, 12 man. Right. Go you to Genesis 49, verse. I told you we're out for half nine this morning. Genesis 
89, verse 10. The one that's asking you and me to follow him is the scepter. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. And what is the scepter? Oh dear, I don't know where I wrote this down or not. It's, it's a, we hear it's an emblem and a symbol of authority and sovereignty. When Prince Charles took that scepter, when the Queen died, I was saying that Prince Charles now has the scepter and lord of authority over. And all these people, I mean, you know, sooner we're going down. But I want to tell you this morning, the child is the one with the scepter. The child, the son, and the head star is the one, and the scepter is the one who is God's sovereign divine authority. And the church, we have not recognized the one with the scepter, the rod of authority. We hear this. The symbol of authority is the, is the idea of one as the shepherd of God's people. And the Lord Jesus Christ is the, shepherd, the true shepherd of God's people. Okay. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. <clears throat> this is one of God's uh, Isaac's sons, sorry, Israel, sorry, Israel's sons. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor all giver from his feet. And until Shedah comes, and until him shall the gathering of the people be. The body of Christ shall be gathered unto the scepter, the Lord. The scepter, listen. The scepter, listen, oh dear, I need to watch what I'm saying here. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from Israel, and the shadow come, and the hem shall the gathering people be. I remember the Lord called me out of the Church of Iron, and he called me to go and, he asked me to go and join the gospel hall, and that's what he told me. And I looked them verses, I looked up, where should I go, where should I go? And may I tell you this, I found out. The one for the scepter is the one you go to. And unto him, you read it there, unto him shall the gallon of the people be. And I showed you a verse in Isaiah, sorry, the Psalm, Psalm 50. And Psalm 50, verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me. Gather my saints together unto me. Feed my lambs. Feed my sheep. Teach them to follow me. The one with the scepter, the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> no issue, yes. If you go to Numbers, I'll show you this. I just want to show in case somebody never seen this before. Numbers 24, verse 17. I remember years ago I read that. that his star appeared in the sky. Okay. And the wise men followed the star. Sorry, they followed his star. Okay. Numbers 24, verse 17. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not now. There shall come a star out of Jacob. Right? Jacob was Abraham's son later on. And his name was later on changed to Israel. And the star will come out of Jacob. And Shadow would come out of Judah, who was the son of Israel, the son of Jacob. And the star will come through the bloodline of Judah. That was Shadow, the Lord Jesus Christ, the town of the Lord Jesus Christ. The star will be the Lord Jesus Christ. So we tell tell this. And a scepter shall rise out of Israel. The scepter, the one with the sovereign divine authority. I'm not making a good joke. But I tell you this. The one whose emblem and God authority today is the child. The son in Isaiah 9 verse 6. The child in Luke 2 verse 11. And now he's the scepter. And he's the one God's people are to look to. Okay. And the government shall rest upon his shoulders, and the kingdom, and the kingdom of God will reign 
on earth. And the king has come, and now we follow the king. And when we follow the king, the kingdom of God will operate in our lives. But we're following God's center. Now that's all to do with the giant that was born in the manger. <clears throat> when you see this, we know I'm going to say here, Jesus rose from the dead. And he says this to his disciples, Matthew 28, verse 18. I don't think we read this, and I don't think we grasp this. Jesus says, Jesus came and spake forth on him, all authority is now given unto me. See, he's got the scepter, he's God's symbol of authority, now he says all authority is given unto me. In heaven, on earth, and under the earth. What is all of who's all authority? The Lord Jesus. Do we recognize what, the, what God has given to his son? He's given him all authority in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. That's why when you get authority in the name of the Lord Jesus and you tell principalities and powers to go, they must buy. Because you're using God's symbol authority, the scepter of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, you and I are in a relationship now with the scepter, the Lord Jesus Christ. And my, God is now my Father. Okay, this, and the Lord Jesus Christ now lives in me and you and our spirits. And may I tell you this, yes, the Bible teaches the Lord Jesus Christ is your brother. And you're a joint heir and an heir of God. And here's the problem. If you stay as a child, you'll never grasp the authority you have. But all I'm saying this morning, I'm, I have five minutes here. We need to recognize the authority that the Father has given the Son. And all through Scripture, the Scripture is foretelling of the coming of the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he has come. And we hear this, now he lives inside you. See these two people yesterday, I was telling So you're going about there to tell people, and we tell you, some of these times you're going to talk about death. Say, so that's what I'm going to say here. I will never see death. Right. And this girl asked me, where do you have verse? Second Timothy 1 verse 9. He brought light. He brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. The Lord Jesus Christ abolished death. You can read it. You should just give somebody second. And then read the other verse now. Kind of 2 Timothy 1, this will give you a burning desire and hope to realize I will never see death. What will happen me is my spirit will leave my body. And all they'll do is take my body if the Lord is not coming up. But I've left and I will be absent from the body present with the Lord. 2 Timothy 1 verse 9, who had saved us and called us not with a holy, call, with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ before the world began, that is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. Second Timothy 1 verse 10. But now is made manifest by the appearing of the child, the Son. Who has abolished death and brought life on immortality to light through the gospel? So I will tell you this, there's a hope. As I said, there's the hope that people need. See, today we're living in a crisis of all across the world where money is so tight and everything's coming in and people's, and people's hearts are so way down with all the struggles and problems of life. And unless your heart's established by the word, but I tell you this, the fear of things and fear of light and fear of things will come upon each one, even believers' lives. 
and then stay an established heart. And that's why we need to feed the lambs and feed the sheep. To establish their heart so it will know all in fear. And I said I'd read one more verse and I finished. Revelation. How this was a great Christmas. And rejoice in the hope and the peace and the joy of knowing that you are God's son and daughters. Revelation 1. I am he that liveth, verse 18. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of hell and of death. Hell has no fear for us, and death has no fear. For the Lord Jesus holds the keys. And did I tell you this? We have been stuck to hold that stuff. And it's time we start to recognize and acknowledge the Lord Jesus Christ. I read this verse and I finished it read earlier on there. Psalm 50, verse 23. Well, we pray for the body of Christ that their eyes and scales be removed off their eyes and they see that the Lord Jesus Christ wants them to live their life and follow and listen to him. Psalm 50 verse 23. The life that pleases me is a life lived in the gratitude of grace. Always choosing to walk with me in what is right. Always choosing, the Lord says this, and following the Lord. Always choosing to walk with me in what is right. This is the sacrifice I desire from you. If you do this, more of my salvation will, will I unfold to you. So the Lord will take you through and show you everything in your life and every plan and everything in your life and with, with the finest detail. And he will take you right through everything. And he will unveil and show you everything in your life. And you will look back amazed. And the other people amazed. You know why you're following the Lord. Just want to pray. Father, we thank you for the child this morning. Thank you, he's the one, the scepter, the one with the rod of authority, a symbol of authority. And Father, we thank you that you've risen, you've risen him from the dead, and now as he said it, and Father, you've exalted him, you've delegated all authority to him. And Father, this morning, we, the church, the body of Christ, recognize the Lord Jesus Christ as total authority over everything. And we thank you for this now, and we pray the Lord's blessing in each one that's listening in every home and every other person in the body of Christ that will get a full revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ and stop making and bringing division, but bring unity and feeding God's lambs and sheep and tell them to follow them the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen. <coughs> thank you.